Hawks, we are witnessing an Elliott Wolf masterclass as he re-signed Josh Uche back on a one-year deal. The former second-round pick out of Michigan is staying in Foxborough on a very, very, very team-friendly deal that actually had all of Patriots Twitter and NFL Twitter in shock on what the deal is. It's a one-year deal with $3 million dollars up to eight mil with incentives so it's a base of three million dollars and up to eight if he actually plays extremely well and earns those roster incentives and stat incentives and maybe pro bowl incentives as well it's not a full details out yet but at least he is returning to the new england patriots as a Edge, who has been an up-and-down player through his career so far, but this is why you subscribe to the channel, because if the Patriots make a move like they did today, we will have you covered. Myself, Nick Roloff, and Harrison Garam will make sure you are up to know on everything surrounding the New England Patriots. We'll even talk about Calvin Ridley on the second half of this video. But I did want to keep it on Josh Uche because I expected him to be gone. The reports out of Foxborough were that the Patriots did not give him an offer before free agency started, which kind of, to me, at least signaled that he is going to likely sign elsewhere. But the market really didn't heat up for Uche. When he did sign, Jonathan Jones did report that there were a few teams interested, but he elected to take a little bit of a discount to stay in Foxborough and play for the Patriots. This actually does not surprise me. It was very well noted that Josh Uche wanted to play for the Patriots in Gerard Mayo. He is a big fan of Mayo, the new Patriots head coach. He was one of a very select few players that actually attended Gerard Mayo's introductory press conference as head coach coach in Gillette Stadium. So there is a very obvious strong connection between Uche and Mayo, which only makes me happier because if Josh is able to get back to his 2022 form, well, the Patriots just got one of the biggest bargains in the entire NFL. Because in 2022, Josh Uche had his breakout season for New England, 27 tackles, 11 and a half sacks with nine TFLs. Now it was a down year in 2023. Three, he only had three sacks, three TFLs, 15 tackles, but this is still a player that if you look over his past two seasons has had 14 and a half sacks and you're getting him on a one-year deal with a base of three million up to eight with incentives. That is an absolute bargain for Elliot Wolf. And I give him a lot of credit. In his first de facto GM role as he is taking over for Bill Belichick. He does not have that title, but he is making all personnel decisions. He has not been too aggressive, even though New England had the most cap space in all of football, heading into free agency with $100 million. And he also hasn't been too passive. Like he's to me, sitting in that perfect realm of the middle of not just overpaying people because we have money, like the Washington Commanders are, but he's also not sitting back and just being scared to go make a move. Sure, a lot of his decisions have been re-signings like Josh Uche, Hunter Henry, Kendrick Bourne, Kyle Duggar with a transition tag. But he's gone out and got some guys. Antonio Gibson, um, some Sion Takitaki, Jacoby Brissett. Like, he's had a solid mix of outside exterior free agents and interior guys that they wanted to re-sign. And... I think we just continue to revisit this point he made early in the offseason that he wants to keep core players in New England and just wants to continue to build the culture and what the Patriots already have. Now, I wouldn't say Josh Uche was a core player for New England over the last season because of how much he struggled. Maybe in 2022, he was considered a core player, but not last season. With, but with Michael Wenu, Kyle Duggar, Kendrick Bourne, Hunter Henry, these guys are leaders, captains, one top players on these rosters that Elliot Wolf continues to express interest in keeping around in the building, and he has done that and kept his word. So I like this move because if he's able to get back to even 50% of his 2022 form. I'm not asking him to have 11 and a half sacks a season. It's not what you're going to ask for him. But in the one-year deal that he has signed, so just for the 2024 season, I think we can ask for middle ground between 2022 and 2023. What does that look like? Six and a half, seven sacks, and 20 tackles. 
Josh Uche is not known for being an elite player in run defense, but that's why you have Jawan Bentley, Jelani Tavai, Christian Barmore, and others up the middle of this defense. Josh Uche is someone who should get after the pass rusher in obvious pass situations, especially on third down. That is how Josh Uche will impact the game. Him and Judon were top five edge rusher duo in 2022. Both of them had injuries all of 2023, and Uche wasn't as successful, which maybe tells you that he can't really be that lone pass rusher, and he needs another guy alongside him like Judam to draw attention so Uche can win in one-on-one -on -one situations. But if you can get 60%, 50% of what you got in 2022 from Josh, a three-headed pass rushing trio, Barmore, Judon, and Uche, can absolutely disrupt opposing offenses, and I am happy that they re-signed him. I thought he was going to leave. I thought he was going to get a two-year, $16 million deal from another team. But he takes a hometown discount, and don't get it twisted. This is absolutely a discount for him to stay in Foxborough and play for Gerard Mayo. One year, $3 million, with $8 million in incentives. Just wanted to revisit that for one last time. All right, before we get out of here on today's video, we got to talk about the latest surrounding Kelvin Ridley because this is certainly a developing situation. The latest reports are that New England continues to pursue him heavily, and reports from Josina Anderson suggest that the Patriots have actually offered Kelvin Ridley a multi-year deal. That should come as no surprise, but the offer is officially on the table for Kelvin Ridley. The problem is, and it was reported by Adam Schefter, that there are two teams that are down to the wire with Ridley. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars and the New England Patriots. And it seems like Kelvin Ridley actually wants to return to Jacksonville for the next few years. Why? Well, he was grew up and born in Fort Lauderdale, attended Alabama. And then was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons, traded to the Jacksonville Jaguars. He has been someone in the southeast part of the United States for his entire career and for his entire life. Does he want to transition into the northeast in the cold? That is unfortunately something we have to talk about with New England because that is not the most... Sorry to break it to you guys. The most attractive place to play for people that are from the South and have been in the South in warm weather and playing in warm conditions their entire life. I grew up in the Northeast, so I got no problem with it. Those are my type of people. But for Calvin Ridley, who likes the warm weather, I don't know if he wants to go to the Northeast. So you might have to pay him some extra money to get him to go over. Now, the watch with Ridley, to me, is a little concerning for New England because I think he is honestly holding out for tomorrow, and that does not benefit the Patriots whatsoever. Even if New England offers him 2 or $3 million more, to me, if Kelvin Ridley does not sign with the New England Patriots today, Tuesday, if you're watching this on Tuesday, I'm talking about today, if Ridley does not sign with New England before Wednesday morning, he is going back to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Why do I say that? Well, it's because of the trade and the reason the Jaguars are waiting and Ridley might be waiting to have a rekindling and a reunion is because of the conditional pick they sent to Atlanta to get Kelvin Ridley just a year ago. It's a conditional pick and one of the conditions was the Falcons get the Jaguars 2024 second round pick if Kelvin Ridley re-signs with the Jacksonville Jaguars. So if he signs with the Jags prior to tomorrow when the league year opens at 4 p.m. Eastern time and he technically resigns with Jacksonville, the Jags have to send a second round pick to the Falcons. If he waits to 4.01 p.m., one minute after the 4 p.m. Eastern time New Year League opening up, then it's just a third rounder going towards the Falcons. So to me, if J Jacksonville and Kelvin Ridley are done and they basically know they're going to have a reunion for next season to me there is no way that it doesn't happen before or until after that 4 p.m eastern time deadline that's just the matter of the fact so if the patriots can't lock up and convince kelvin ridley to sign with them today to me it just tells me ridley is going to sign with the jaguars at 401 p.m eastern time tomorrow and new england will be out of the ridley sweepstakes as he is returning to jacksonville it's my opinion i don't know anything but just connecting dots it kind of seems like that the that's the way it might be heading now before we do actually head out of here there is contingency options for new england chad graff the beat reporter for the athletic that covers new england said this, that even if the patriots miss out on calvin ridley in free agency they're still going to target 
top-end wide receivers via the trade. There isn't top-end wide receivers left out in free agency. The best one would be Marquise Brown, and I am not in the business of giving Marquise Brown money because I don't think he's a good route runner, doesn't have the best hands. He's just a burner, and that is not what New England needs. They need someone that can consistently get open on money plays in the red zone and third down, and that is not Marquise Brown. So what are the options? Well, T. Higgins requested a trade from Cincinnati. You could send pick 34 to the Bengals for T. Higgins and extend him for 20 plus million dollars. He's much younger than Ridley, so he would fit the timeline of not just being someone over the next three years, but someone that can grow with that quarterback they pick at number three that we expect for the next six to seven years. That's more enticing than Kelvin Ridley, who's probably going to be cooked after three because he'd be 32 at that point. There's also Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. One of those two guys will be traded slash cut. That is just a fact. The Chargers have to get cap uh, compliant, and to me, they are going to move on from one of their wide receivers. I probably lean it will be Mike Williams because Keenan Allen's better. Keenan Allen's a legend in the Chargers organization, and Mike Williams has a ton of injury history. And the thing for New England that could be enticing with Mike Williams is that, yeah, it's a large cap hit of 20 mil per season, but you can get him relatively cheap. Like because of his cap and because the charges are done with them, you can get Mike Williams for like a fifth round pick and you keep your top end draft capital to use in a second, third round on a wide receiver or an offensive tackle to pair up with a young quarterback, but you still add Mike Williams to this room. It's pretty enticing if you ask me. The last wide receiver that I keep my eyes out for is Brandon Ayuk. He is an elite wide receiver for the San Francisco 49ers and has become their wide receiver one over Debo Samuel. I don't know if the 49ers are in the business of trading him. They probably are not. But as long as he has not signed an extension, the rumors out there are going to be that he could be dealt because he is looking for that long-term deal. And to me, if you had to give me an option between Ridley, Ayuk, T. Higgins, or Mike Williams and you take into account opportunity cost of what you'd have to trade for Williams, T. Higgins, Ayuk, and then just not have to trade for Ridley and sign him, but also the contract extensions, I'm still taking Brandon Ayuk because it would likely still cost that 34th pick just like T. Higgins. And Brandon Ayuk, to me, is better receiver at all facets of the game. He could beat you deep. He could beat you in a contested catch point. But he is the best route runner out of that four wide receiver group that I mentioned. So if... The Patriots missed out on Calvin Ridley. Keep your eye out for Brandon Ayuk and T. Higgins in the trade market, as well as Mike Williams, where I would like Brandon Ayuk the most. But that's just me. Let me know which wide receiver you want down in the comments section. That'll do it for today's video. We will be back likely again if the Patriots don't make a signing. But obviously, if there's another move that the Patriots and Elliott Wolf make, we will have a video. I'm Nick Roloff. Make sure you subscribe and join the channel because it's a long off season and it's just getting started.